God who's more than able, hallelujah, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. But the Bible says that it's according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. So there's some power, hallelujah, glory to God, that is working in you tonight. And you have to know that there's some power working in you. Amen. Glory to God. But in order to tap into that power source, amen, who is Jesus himself, you have to know that there is power that is working in you. Glory to God. So I just wanted to release that tonight before we get started, just to encourage your spirit, just to encourage your heart tonight to let you know that God has need of you. Glory to God. God has need of you. Hallelujah. Blessings to you all tonight. Thank you all for taking the time to join. Those of you on uh, Periscope tonight, Periscope here, Facebook here. <laughs> Glory to God. We're on our prayer line as well tonight. And we just thank God. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for this opportunity to minister to you all tonight. Amen. Watching from California. God bless you all the way in California. To God be the glory. Those of you that are coming on Facebook, just type your city and state where you're um, chiming in from. Is that all right? Those of you on Facebook, those of you on Periscope, let me know where you are chiming in from. Let me know where you're viewing from tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And those on the prayer line, listen, reach out to someone, let somebody know, text message somebody and say, listen, my pastor is on the line tonight getting ready to release a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes people need to know that you even believe in your leader. Sometimes people need to know that you even believe in your ministry. Glory to God. Listen, hallelujah. You'd be surprised how many people are sitting back and they're watching to see if you're going to encourage or even push forth your ministry. You know, you know what a lot of people are saying right now? They're saying, well, listen, they ain't saying nothing about it. So why should I? <laughs> you know, that's just like even ministering. That's just like even talking about the Lord. You know, people will people will uh, be encouraged. Blessings to you all tonight. People will be encouraged to talk about God the more that you talk about him. Selah, we're going to pause right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is why I encourage our members and covenant partners to testify. I encourage you all to testify. Hallelujah. I encourage you all to testify because your testimony is going to help you to overcome. Glory to God. Your testimony. Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Listen, your testimony is going to help you to overcome. Listen, if you don't testify, then how can you overcome? The Bible says that we overcome. Hallelujah. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. But if you don't never say anything. My God, tonight, if you don't never testify about Jesus being your savior or being your healer or be, oh, y'all don't want to talk tonight. Hi, you did your shot. Glory to God. If you don't never open your mouth and say what God is to you, then how they going to know? Woo, hi, you did your shot. How they going to know? I'm just saying, amen. We have to begin to open our mouths. We have to begin to testify. Periscope, y'all getting with me tonight. Amen. I thank y'all for coming in. I thank y'all for the hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Maybe some of you need to just shake yourself tonight. Maybe you need to shake off today. Maybe you need to just shake off the residue. I don't know what you need to shake off. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. But somebody need to shake off something tonight. Listen, shake off the doubt. Shake off the fear. Shake off the unbelief. Woo, my God, how you did the old shot? Because somebody tonight, you walking in unbelief. Come on. You either trust God or you don't. You either believe or you don't. Blessings to you all tonight. Thank you all for uh, taking the time to share. Amen. Thank you, Sister Stacy. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, that's one thing I love is hair. Amen. I love to do hair and I love a beautiful hairstyle. Amen. So we truly bless the Lord tonight and thank you for the compliment. Glory to God. Um, we're going to dive into the word. Amen. Our sister Sequita has prayed us in on tonight and we have all said amen. You know, amen means and it is so. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen means and it is so. Listen, so when you say amen, let me just teach a little bit right here. When you say amen, you are in agreement to what has been spoken. You are in agreement to what has been released. My God, my God. Some of you need to just start agreeing with what God is saying. Uh-oh. I hear the spirit of the Lord tonight. Sometimes you just need to be in agreement. 
you know, there's power in agreement. Holy Ghost is speaking right here. There's power in agreement. That's why we touch and agree in prayer. Uh, whew, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. This is why we touch and agree in prayer. But if you don't never pray, we're going to leave that right there. <laughs> Somebody say, well, I pray. You know, I pray all the time. Come on here. That's right, Pastor Kelly. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And you know, the Bible also says that any two on earth agree touching anything that they shall ask. The Father says it shall be done in Jesus' name. My God, tonight. Higher did your shot. Somebody shout, it shall be done in Jesus' name. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited in the Lord tonight. I'm excited for each and every one of you. Amen. That are getting ready to receive and hear the word of the Lord. Some of you may have seen the caption on tonight. Glory to God. Some of you are just watching. Some of you are just looking at me and that's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord did reveal that to me. Glory to God. And so guess what? Hallelujah. We're in a time right now where, amen, you're either in or you're out. Come on, we're in a time right now, you're either in or you're out. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Lord reminded us last week, he said, tell my people, the Lord spoke this in our, in our ministry. He said, tell my people, I'm giving them a second chance. Now that word blessed me, because I was like, you know what? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, because I don't always dot every I and cross every T. <sighs> Say loud, we're going to pause right there for a minute. I thank God for a second chance. Come on, the word hits me first before it, before I release it unto you. I know it's many of you that are praying for my downfall. Can I just speak this on Facebook for a minute? Hi, you did your shot. Can, can I just can I just speak this in the atmosphere just for a minute? It's all right. Listen. The moment that you pray for somebody else's downfall, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to fall in that ditch yourself. It's a dangerous thing to try to curse a child of God. God said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. See, I have the boldness to say what many of you want to say, but you just don't say it. I will look a demon in the face and tell them, I know you don't like me, but I still love you because I'm required to love you. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm, I'm required by God. Woo, somebody shout, that's maturity. Hey, hey, higher than the old shy. I, I'm required as God's leader to love you. That's my requirement from the father. So I can't say I love God who I cannot see. I'm still in the book, but I see you and I don't love you. Somebody shout, I, I can't be fake. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I, I can't be fake. It's either I like you or I don't, but I'm going to tell you if I don't like your spirit. If I don't like your spirit, I'm going to let you know I don't like your spirit. I'm not going to fake the funk. I'm not going to smile in your face. Because if I don't like your spirit, I just don't like your spirit. Come on here. But we're in a time now where people put on a, a face. We on Facebook, right? <laughs> Come on, somebody. How you did your shot? This is Facebook, right? So people will put on a persona. We're going to talk about it tonight. Is that all right? People will put on a persona that they care for you or that they even care for your ministry. Right, Sister Lisa? But deep in their heart, they don't like you. I told you all, I'll say something that I, I will say what's on your heart that you just don't have the boldness to say. Why has God given me this boldness? Because I'm his prophet. Thank you, Jesus. And so there are times that the prophet will speak for you. My God, there are also times that the prophet will pray for you. Ah, come on here. Hallelujah. Somebody may say, I can pray for myself. You are so right. You sure can pray for yourself. But guess what? The prophet has the ability to pray higher than the old shot as they see in the realm of the spirit for you. Sometimes we pray amiss and the Bible speaks about that. We, we can't pray amiss. We're in a time now, people of God, we got to hit the target. 
When you praying, you got to hit the target. You, we're not going around in a circle. No, 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 no. God is birthing prayer back into this nation. And how is God going to birth back prayer in the nation if the church ain't praying? Ah, oh, my God, my God. What did you write about the mothers? The old pioneers used to tell us that if we didn't, I'm sorry, if you don't love me, I'm sorry. Let me read your comment here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you don't love me, <laughs> don't don't you die. What what does that mean? I don't I don't know what that means, woman of God. Make your um your comment clear if you can, please. Thank you, Jesus. Higher did your shot. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're in a time now where we have to be real because God wants to use you in your realness. Amen. Anything fake, anything that's dead has to die. Come on here. How you did your shot? Thank you, Jesus. Anything that's not bearing forth fruit has to be cut down in this season of your life. If you don't cut it down and you don't get rid of it, eventually it will destroy you. I have the word of the Lord in my belly tonight for those who will receive it. For those of you that would hear it and receive it. Glory to God. And that's another way that you get delivered by being real. Higher did he your shot. See, this ministry is a healing and deliverance ministry. So when you need healing in your body or you need healing for your soul, you need healing in your spirit. God will lead you to this ministry because you have been wounded somewhere along the way. Well, how did I get here? You may ask yourself that question. How, how did I get connected to Prophetess Carmen? How did I get connected to Pastor Carmen? How did I get connected to the prayer line? The spirit of the Lord led you here because there's something inside of you that you need God to work out. And if he doesn't reveal it to me, then I don't know, Sister Pamela. But the moment that he reveals it to me, whoo, the Holy Ghost is going to come after that thing. Come on here, especially if it's destroying you. Oh, tonight's going to be a good night. Somebody hashtag tonight is going to be a good night. Hallelujah. The woman of God says, my pastor just taught this lesson in Bible study. Look at God. Look at God. Listen, we thank God for confirmation. Listen, God is so mindful of us. Somebody, somebody hashtag God is mindful of me. Somebody hashtag God is mindful of me. Listen, he's so mindful of us. Let me, let me just, let me just lay the foundation and help somebody out tonight. The Lord is so mindful of us that he doesn't want us to continue in error. God is so mindful of his chosen vessels that he doesn't want us to, to continue in sin that grace would abound. Who am I talking to tonight? God is so mindful. Mm, help me, Holy Spirit, tonight. I, he's so mindful of you that even in your disobedience, he still loves you. Woo. Even in your error, he still loves you because he's sending correction. The Bible says that God chastises those whom he loves and because he loves us somebody shout god loves me hallelujah come on because god loves you he's so mindful to bring the correction that you need at the right time glory hallelujah come on sister Izena. you're on periscope you know exactly what i'm talking about god will speak to you at that moment when you need to hear his voice god will speak to you he'll give you a word higher than your shot that you cannot deny Thank you, Jesus. God will release a word through his prophet that you all you can do is just agree and say, you know what? You're you right. You are so right. You're right. God's been dealing with me concerning that. Hallelujah. And so what happens when we continue to ignore God's voice? We're now in deeper disobedience, but he still loves you. He still loves you because he'll send a word of correction. We're talking about the love of God. Come on here. Everybody says that they know him. Do you really know him? Hiya, did he your shot? Come on. We say we know God, but do you really know him? Whew, my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul said, listen, I got to know him so much that I can't even let my life be a shipwreck. In other words, the apostle Paul began to say, he said, listen, I can't preach to you and my life be a, a shipwreck. He said, you know what? I'd rather not even preach at all. Come on here. See, the apostle Paul was determined to get it right with Jesus. Say, we're going to pause right there for a minute. 
Come on, because tonight we're going to talk about dead weights. Tonight we're going to talk about everything that's dead in our life. Is that all right? Some of you have your notepads out, and I want you to start writing everything that is weighing you down. Is that all right? I may not be your pastor tonight. You may need a pastor. You may not even have a ministry. This may be your ministry. Pray about it. Glory to God, because you need a covering. You need a pastor that can minister to your spirit, that can help you, amen, to, to, to operate, not just operate in the things of God, but you need a pastor that can teach you the word of God so that you can grow in the things of God and be a real saint. I'm just saying Come on, you got so many people running around with a Jesus hat, carrying a Bible all day long, but they're not living the word that they're preaching. Come on. It's going to be hard to teach somebody something that you don't even walk in yourself. Come on. It's going to be hard for your light to shine. Come on, if you're not really living for God. I talked about it on Facebook today, something about titles. The Lord gave it to me, dropped it in my spirit. I released it, I, I released it immediately. We got to put down the titles if we're not willing to do the work. God's going to hold you accountable for that. Come on, you say you are archbishop, but you're not over anybody's ministry, let alone even your own house. God's going to hold you accountable for that. You say you're a prophet, but you don't never prophesy. The word of the Lord, God's going to hold you accountable for that. You say you're a pastor, but nobody is under your ministry. You don't have anybody to pour into. God's going to hold you accountable for that. You say that you're an apostle, but you don't walk in miracles. God's going to hold you accountable for that. It's a lot of woes that are going out right now. From the true prophets. Houses, cars, babies, and weddings are beautiful, but that's not what the true prophets are speaking in this hour. The true prophets are speaking, repent and turn away from sin. A message like this tonight is not popular, but it's going to save your life. A message like this encouraging you to drop the dead weight, Sister Camille, Prophetess Camille, a word like this, it's going to have you to be lighter so that you can do the things of God so that you don't continue to miss the mark. Who am I talking to? Because it's going to be hard to keep on running if you're missing the mark. If you keep missing the mark and God gives you another opportunity to keep on running. But you keep missing the mark because of people, because of your connections, because of places you're going. Come on here. How many of you know that diminishes your anointing? Don't let the devil tell you that you can go anywhere and be with anybody and connect to anything and that God's still going to use you. I promise you those spirits are going to jump on you. And if you don't have an overseer or have a covering, you in, you in bad shape. You are in bad shape. Don't, don't let nobody tell you that the devil is not real because he is real. The Bible says in John 10 and 10, let me just help somebody tonight. The Bible says in John 10 and 10 that the thief, somebody shout the thief. He's a thief. So he's not bringing you anything. The devil's not bringing you anything. He's taking from you. Speak Holy Ghost. So the Bible says in John 10 and 10 that the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus has come that you might have what? Life. And have it that more abundantly. Come on, somebody. Sister Zia, I've been praying for you. I'm glad you're on the broadcast tonight. I will continue to pray for you. But it's some decisions you have to make, Sister Zia. I will inbox you later. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Somebody just shout, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is the time, people of God. Amen. Where your connections matter the most. Listen, our connections with people matter the most. If you're connected to toxicity, you're connected to gossip and slander, you're connected to jealous spirits and, you know, demonic um, conversations. Oh, yeah, it's something called demonic conversations where people, that's all they do is talk about the enemy or that's all they do is talk about curses and, you know, doing all kinds of stuff to people. That is called demonic activity. And if you're connected to people like that, eventually it's going to grab a hold to your spirit. 
Come on. When Jesus is saying, come out from among them and be ye separated, some of you are latching hold to the devil. But God going to set you free tonight. If you let him, he going to set you free tonight. Hey, hey. If you let God do it, he's going to set you free tonight. Some of you are tired. Some of you are going around cycles and circles. And some of you, you're going around so many cycles. And you're saying, when is the cycle going to be broken? Woo. Yes, God, I hear you. The cycle is going to be broken the moment that you give it over to God. Because see, the prophet can only give you the word, but if you're not ready for healing and deliverance, it's not going to happen. I'm going to say that again. You can talk to five different prophets and they can give you a word concerning your situation. It's not until your mindset, somebody hashtag mindset, it's not until your mindset is ready for change. Hey, hey, how you did your shot? Glory to God. I pray deliverance for a lot of people. I pray healing for a lot of people. And it's not until they are ready for change. I can cast the devil out of you and you can go home and pick the devil right back up again. Hey, hey. I've seen people do it. But God is so merciful. Woo. You got to stay free. Who am I talking to? When God sets you free, you got to stay free. That means you got to shut every door to the enemy. We're going to talk about it in just a minute. Glory be to God. You got to close the doors to the devil, which means sometimes you got to cut. Sometimes you got to cut some people off. Some of you know what you need to cut off. Some of you know what's weighing you down. Some of you know that that toxic relationship or even that toxic marriage is causing you to stumble and fall. Some of you know that. Some of you know that you're connected to your past and your past is just that, your past. Some of you are praying for new connections, but you're holding on to the old ones. God is saying tonight, I need you to make room. Somebody hashtag, I'm making room. <laughs> Glory. Higher than your shot. Somebody shout, I'm, I'm, I'm making room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, God, I hear you. We just hit a nail on the head because somebody needed to hear that tonight. Listen, you asking God for expansion. You asking God for more. You asking God to use you in ministry. You asking God to develop your prayer life. But you're still connected to the toxic things that keep weighing you down. Your past is just that, your past. Some of you need new connections because the oil that is upon your life has dried up. Can I help somebody tonight? Somebody may say, did she just say the oil dried up? The Holy Ghost said that your oil dried up. You need fresh oil. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? You need fresh. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but this word is in my belly. You need fresh oil. Some of you need fresh fire, which comes from this ministry all the time. If you can, if you connect with this ministry, oh, you're going to stay on fire. You, you're going you're gonna to stay on fire for God. You're going to stay on fire for God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Because God is always moving. God is not stuck and stagnated. Listen, the Bible says he never sleeps nor slumber. We sleep and we slumber, but God is always awake. <laughs> oh, my God, my God. Hi, you did your shot. I said he's always awake. So what does that mean? That God is always moving. God is always speaking. Ah, God is always encouraging and he's still yet judging. Somebody shout, he's the sovereign God. And because he's a sovereign God, he can do what he want to do when he wants to do it and how he chooses to do it. God is sovereign. Hallelujah. But when it's your time, it's your time. Come on. Somebody hashtag when it's my time, it's my time. When it's your time of healing, it's your time of healing. When it's your time of deliverance, it's your time of deliverance. But what did God speak to us on Sunday concerning Psalm chapter one? L let me just read Psalm chapter one real quick in your hearing. Is that all right? Can I read Psalm one to you? Amen. And then we're going to turn to the book of John. Is that all right? Because somebody needs to hear this tonight. Glory to God. Psalm chapter one, let me just give you this. It's not in my notes, but I know somebody needs to hear this because I hear the scripture in my ear. Glory to God. Hi, it is your shot. Kimbrell, you need prayers to go up right now. Can you inbox me, please? 
Thank you, Jesus. Can you inbox me? Amen. Your prayer requests. Listen, some of you, you know what your trouble is. Can, can I help some of y'all tonight? Some of you, your problem is that you don't have a ministry. You don't have a pastor. When I got saved, God planted me. Selah, we're going to pause again right there. Some of you don't have a, a spiritual leader in your life. That's why you're wandering everywhere. It's a dangerous thing to come on Facebook and ask Facebook to pray for you. See, ain't nobody going to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you. Hiya, did your shot. You got witches and warlocks on Facebook all day long. And some of you on there telling all your business. Some of you on there talking about pray for me concerning this and pray. Everybody is not praying. Some people are praying. P R I'm sorry, P R E Y I N G. Praying against you. Somebody shout, Lord, increase my discernment. Stop asking people to pray for you all the time. You might just get that witch that's going to pray for you and they going to pray all right. Hiya, did the old shot. And they going to follow you, connect with you, and they going to they gonna watch your every single move. Red man sukkot, did the shot. Jesus have mercy. Because see, that's what witches and warlocks do. Come on here. That's what divination does. Come on here. I'm ready to cut off people. I ain't running after nobody. Because half of these people, they don't want God. Red man sukkot, did your shot. God revealed that to me. Half the people on social media don't even want God. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. They don't want change. They just want their ears tickled. They don't want deliverance. They just want their ears tickled. They just want somebody to tell them how wonderful they are. Well, I have your word tonight. You're not wonderful, but Jesus is. I'm not wonderful, but Jesus is. Come on. There's so many people on social media that need to be saved. You need to find a church home. You need to find a pastor, an apostle. You need to find a covering. See, ain't nobody going to tell you this. Because, see, they want your offering and they want your money. I don't want your seed tonight. But if you want to give it unto God, that's between you and the Lord. If you want to bless this ministry tonight, that's between you and God. But I have to give you what thus saith the Lord. Because too many of you are running around and you're seeking after something that don't even exist. In other, higher than your shot. If you come across a ministry that God is really speaking and moving, you're blessed. You are blessed. That's all right. We got some mad faces. Good. I'm glad the devil's showing up. Because somebody's going to be saved tonight for real. Somebody's going to get delivered tonight for real. Somebody's hashtag for real. Come on here. You, you, some of you need it straight. When you was out in the world, you had it straight. <laughs> Come on here. Some of you, listen, y'all was, was drinking alcohol. You ain't had no chaser. It came straight. Okay. Now you in the Lord and you want people to sugarcoat? God don't sugarcoat anything. He's a God of wrath and he's a God of judgment. He's also a God of blessings, but he blesses you through your obedience to him. So when you are obedient, he has to bless you. God has to favor you when, you, oh, help me, Holy Ghost tonight. When, when you are, listen, when you are obedient to God, who am I talking to? He has to bless you. Somebody shout, God, God to bless me when I'm obedient. Listen, Matthew 6 and 33, one of my favorite scriptures. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says, and all these things shall be added unto you. Sometimes you need things added to your life. But if you're in disobedience, nothing's going to be added. It's going to be subtracted. I'm going to say that one more time for the Holy Ghost. When we are in disobedience, God's children, when you're in disobedience, things are subtracted from your life, not added to. You look around and you, after a while, you don't have anything. And the reason why is because of disobedience. 
Come on, it could be your thoughts. It could be your deeds. It could be your motives. Who am I talking to tonight? Somebody may say, well, Providence, I, I'm just living life. I'm getting up every day and I'm living life. But are you living your life according to the word of God? This is why you need a pastor. This is why you need a ministry to connect to that can feed you the word of God. Let's just go a little deeper right here. What's the reality of many of you waking up every day and studying your word? Come on, I want you to be real honest tonight. What is the reality of you getting up? We're we going to go a little deeper. Because see, sometimes people only read the word when it's their time to preach. Sometimes people only read the word when, they, when they're in a ditch or when they're in trouble. Sometimes people... See, when you're on the mountaintop and God is blessing, you know, you up in the mountain, you up in the clouds and you just like, you know, see, the woman of God says, I don't study to be honest. Come on. Come on. So you need a ministry that you can go to that is going to feed you the word of God. You don't need nobody to sugarcoat the word. You don't need nobody to tickle your ears. Come on. You need the true, authentic word of God because that's what's going to change you. Somebody shout the word is going to change me. Come on. See, she says, sometimes I'm confused. Exactly, Latoya. That's it. I'm glad you said that. Sometimes people read the word and they don't get the revelation. Do you know your pastor gets the revelation because your pastor is connected to God? Come on. Do you know that your pastor spends time with God in his presence for you? Whew. The time that you can't spend with God or better yet, the time that you can't read the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will send a leader to help you and say, no, this is the word of God. This is what you follow. Somebody say, well, I don't want to be a part of a ministry. I don't want to be a part of a church. I, I, I just want to do what I want to do. Okay. When Jesus comes back, then is the Holy Ghost inside of you? Come on. See, because the Holy Spirit brings conviction. Let me just teach right here. Many people are in sin because there's no conviction. You need to hear the word of God about the Holy Spirit to even desire the Holy Spirit. Ah, my God, my God, help me tonight, Father. Glory to God. Listen, you need to hear about the Holy Ghost that comes with power. Hey, hey, hiya, did your shot. See, the Holy Ghost comes with power. I'm talking about power to live right, power to talk right, power, listen, power to preach right. Power to rightly divide the word of truth. Blessings to you, son, tonight, prophet Israel. Listen, God, the Holy Spirit gives us power. And that's what many of you need. You need power. You need power to know how to live and how to love everybody. <laughs> Come on here. Some of you don't like people, but you say there's a calling on your life. How is there a calling on your life, but you don't even like people? How God going to use you, but you don't even like... How are you a prophet of God, but you don't even love his people? Selah, let's pause again. L let's ponder upon that. Come on. You don't even like God's people, but you, 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 you want to be used by God. Come on. You complaining all the time, but you're saying God gave you a word. So that's a mixture in your spirit. I want to help somebody tonight. And guess what? God cannot effectively use you when there's a mixture in your spirit. Come on. Jesus said you either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, he's going to do what? Spew you out of his mouth. That's the word of God. Come on. We can't serve two masters. See, this is holiness preaching. I, I don't know about anybody else. Amen. But you got some churches, you got some pastors that'll tell you, you can do whatever you want to do. You can live however you want to live. Long as you preach the time I ask you to preach, the devil is a liar. I've taken many people off the program because their spirit wasn't right. Come on here. When God reveals that their spirit ain't right. Okay. You park it, park, park it right on over there. Come on. Come on here. And if we had more leaders like that, then guess what? The body of Christ will be where it needs to be. And for all the onlookers, all of you that are just watching tonight and not engaging, listen, I love you anyway. Glory to God. I love you anyway. Hi, did your shot. It's so many people that are watching this ministry that are praying our downfall. It's not going to happen. 
It's not going to happen. God's not going to allow what he birthed out and what he brought up and what he raised up to crumble. It's not going to happen. Come on here. Let's read Psalm 1. Let's read Psalm 1. Correction. God don't, don't feel good, but it helped me. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes. And some of you just need, some of you need um, a covering. Some of you that are being used by God, God is using you. You need a covering. Amen. In other words, you need someone to cover you in prayer as you're going forth in your ministry. There are so many people, and that's why the attacks of the enemy continue to come. Let me just minister to the to the ministers and the prophets that are watching tonight. Let me just encourage you with this. Find a covering. I don't have to be your covering. I'm just saying, find a covering. Find an apostle to cover you. Find a ministry to cover you while you're going forth in your ministry. Let me tell you something about the devil. He will chew you up and spit you out and make you look like a fool. Did I say fool? The Bible speaks about being a fool. How do we know? Because you got five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. Some people may say, did she just call me a fool? No, Holy Spirit is ministering to you. I didn't call anybody a fool. But the Bible speaks about us making foolish decisions. Come on. The, the Bible speaks about us being foolish and us being wise. When we listen to God, we walk in wisdom. When we listen to the devil, we walk in foolish things. That's why some of you keep making the same mistakes. Help me, Holy Ghost. That's what I hear. Some of you keep making the same mistakes. You keep making the same mistakes because you believe that your thinking is right and you're not applying the word of God. The moment that you apply the word of God to your situation, it's going to change. It's going to shift. And guess what? Your mindset is going to shift first and then your situation is going to shift. Glory to God. Some of you, God has already shifted you. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that some of you that are connected to this ministry, you've already shifted. Glory to God. Some of you, you know how to tell the devil no. Some of you have a prayer life. Some of you read your word. Glory to God. Some of you really, if Jesus was to come back, you desire to hear well done. And that's the purpose of ministry, to prepare you to hear well done. Glory to God. Listen, ministry is to prepare us here on the earth. But if you don't have a ministry that you're connected to, then how can you be prepared? You know what some people say? I can prepare myself. Well, I, I want to see how that's going to happen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Because I am the product of three powerful leaders. I'm the product of three ministers, powerful pastors who poured into me. It took three, y'all. And some of you can't even have one. You complain about that. <laughs> Come on. Blessings to you, Sister Divinity. Listen, I had three. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who loved the, They loved me so much that they loved every spirit out of me. Come on here. Because <laughs> see, when somebody loves you, they want to see you do better. When you have a true leader, they want to see you do better, not just prosper in the things of God. Listen, a true leader wants, to, wants you to see a prayer life develop. A, a true leader wants to see you walking in the things of God. You know, a true pastor, a true leader want, wants to see the glory of God on your life. Higher than the old shot. A true leader is not going to be jealous of you, but they're going to get you to the place you need to be in God. And then they're going to just let your hand go. And when they let your hand go, that's time for you to walk alone. Come on here. Hallelujah. That's time for you to walk alone. But guess what? As you're walking alone, guess what's happening? God is still there with you. Glory to God. He's, he's there with you. And guess what? Not only is he there with you, he'll equip you. He'll bless you. Hallelujah for the ministry that he's called you to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, everyone needs a successor. In other words, everyone needs somebody to pour into them. Don't let nobody tell you that you don't. And some of you are right there because you have a calling on your life. You need to pray and ask God, who is it? What ministry do I connect to? Listen, Jesus is coming back. The Lord is coming back. And you cannot be caught with your work undone. My God, my God. Listen, we as God's people cannot be caught with our work undone. Listen, hallelujah. Can you imagine standing before God and you did not complete your kingdom assignments? All because of people. 
or the opinions of people? Can, can you imagine that you're so caught up in a relationship where you're on a job so much to the point to where you don't have time to spend with God? He's going to hold you accountable for that. Come on, somebody. See, there are a lot of woes that are going out. W-O-E. Let, let me just help somebody right here. And we're going to read Psalm 1 in a minute. There are a lot of woes that are going out from God's true prophet. You know why God is sending the woes out? And listen, a woe is a correction. A woe is a rebuke. Listen, God is rebuking the body of Christ because we are in error. And I'm saying we because I'm a part of the body of Christ. Listen, God gives me a word to tell you all anything dead to cut it off. Come on here. That means that word had to apply to me first. I can't minister to you something that didn't minister to me first. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> so there are a lot of woes that are going out, right, Pastor Darlene? And so the Lord had me in the book of Revelations. And it, this is not even my message, but let me just share this for those of you that can hear the word of the Lord. Those of you that have an ear to hear God. So God had me in a book of Revelation where it talks about the seven, um, glory to God. Let me, let me, let me pull up my notes here. Hold on. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But it talks about the woes. It talks about the corrections that are given. And listen, many people don't want correction, but we in a time of correction. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. There it is. The seven seals. Glory to God. I'm pulling up my notes. Amen. Because I had to write down notes. I had to, as God was giving it to me, it was so profound to the point to where I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, it just overtook me. So that's where the Lord has, has me at. Amen. I like to share because I don't want to just come before you all. Amen. Like I'm some wonderful, you know, I'm just his vessel. Amen. But God downloads in his prophets. So the true prophets of God, he downloads in us his word. Amen. Glory to God. He speaks unto his prophets. Let me give you a scripture. The Bible says that surely the Lord God would do nothing unless he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And so God trusts his prophets enough with his secrets. Somebody shout, God knows what he's doing. <laughs> Come on here. But just like God is saying to you all tonight, he who has an ear, let him hear. It's the same thing for the prophet. Because you can have a prophet like Jonah. We shifting again. Mm. Glory to God. You can have a prophet like Jonah in disobedience. Listen, listen, you can be a prophet but still be in disobedience. Come on. You may not have made it to your place of destiny and purpose yet. Come on. Glory to God. And so if you're like Jonah, just know you're going to get there, but it's going to cost you something. Woo. My Lord. See, it cost Jonah his disobedience, cost him. The Bible said that he had to pay the fare to go to um, Tarshish. God told him to get up. He said, Jonah, arise. We shifting right here. Let's stay here for a second. I got to stay here. Glory to God. Because even in our disobedience, God loves us enough to speak to us. Come on. So he tells Jonah, amen, in the book of, um, I believe it's the second chapter. He says, arise. He tells Jonah, get up. He said, Jonah, I need you to get up, but I need you to get up and I need you to go to Nineveh. And he's, and after he told him where to go, he told him what to do. He said, I need you to cry against that wicked city because their sin has come up before me. That's what God told Jonah. And the Bible says that Jonah got up. So he followed the first instruction, but he didn't go where God told him to go. Mm. My Lord, the Bible says that he got up and he, he fled away from the, ple the presence of the Lord. Let's read it. Amen. We're going to get to, we're going to get to um, Psalm one in a minute. We, let, let's, let's just flow right here. Cause somebody needs to hear this. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. I hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this because your disobedience is going to cost you something. Don't, don't let nobody tell you that being disobedient to God is not going to cost you because it is. Come on here. God is speaking to some of you, telling you to get up and go to a place, but you have to go exactly. Somebody shout exactly <laughs> where God is telling you to go. Hallelujah. And I can even seal this word because I'm in a place where God told me to go. Amen. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. God told me to get up and come here. He said, it's a kingdom assignment. And I said, yes, God. And I'm not saying that boastful or bragging either. I'm saying that because when God tells you to go somewhere, when the Lord tells you to do something, you better do it. We got to stop saying we prophets and we're not obeying God for our personal life. 
Come on. We got to stop saying God has called us and we're disobedient in our houses. <laughs> Come on here. We, we got to stop saying what we say we are and we're so disobedient. And God got to do like this. This is what I hear the Lord saying. This is what he's doing all the time. He's just smacking you right on your hand. This right here hurt after a while. Listen, I know my grandmother used to pop me when I did something wrong. She, I'm like, oh, that hurt. You know, somebody keep popping you in the same spot. That sting hurts, doesn't it? Any, anybody else? Look, I, I don't know, but I, I know it hurts me. And listen, if God got to chastise me, then that, guess what that tells me? That means that I'm hurting him. Mm. Whew, that's heavy right there. That, that's heavy right there. If God has to continue to chastise us, he loves us now. But if he got to keep doing, that's more strength. It's taking more strength for God to chastise us than it is for him to sit back and bless us. Any parents that's watching? <laughs> Come on here. It takes you more effort to discipline your child than it takes to bless them, right? Because I know when my kids was young, I used to tear fire to them. <laughs> and I would be sweating sometimes. Listen, I'd be so... I would say, you know what? This is too much right here. <laughs> Matter of fact, you just on punishment. Let me, let me just put you on punishment. Because you know punishment will hurt them more, right? You take away the games and the phones. Come on, I'm still talking about God. Because there are times that he puts us on punishment. Some of y'all don't believe it. There, there are times that God say, you sit right on over there. Because you keep messing up. And you're not going to mess my name up. How you did your shot? Glory to God. Listen, sometimes we can make a mockery of God. This is why the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Come on. So we are sowing for our disobedience. I don't know why people think that they don't, they're not going to pay the price. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why we feel like we can do what we want to do. Somebody need to share this video. Somebody need to share on Facebook. Somebody need to share on Periscope with your followers. I, I don't know why we feel like we can do whatever we want to do and there's no repercussion for our actions. Come on. The Bible clearly says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Come on. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Thank you for your seed, woman of God. I just speak a 100-fold return in Jesus' name. And I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus, and I count it done. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is it that we feel like we can do and say whatever we want? Now, listen, and we don't ever repent now. Listen, listen. There are some, there are some times, you know, we do all kinds of stuff, and we don't repent. And we just jump right back in like everything is okay. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. We can't do whatever we want to do and jump right back in the flow of things. Like everything, God is watching everything we do. Come on. The Lord is watching everything that we do. Come on here. Hallelujah. And sometimes correction has to come. I teach it here in this ministry. The three C's. Correction, conviction, and change. Come on. A man of God messaged me from Periscope. He's been watching our ministry for a few years now. He said those three C's changed his life. I said to God be the glory. Hallelujah. He began to express how he was in disobedience with leadership. How it's a calling on his life. You know, and he began to say those three C's changed my life. Amen. Sent the ministry an email. He sent us an email how it changed his life. Come on here. Sometimes all you need is that one word. All you need is that one word sometimes that will just spark your interest. And not only just spark your interest, it'll get your attention. Come on. Sometimes you just need God to get your attention. Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. That's right. The three C's. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Correction, conviction, and change. I teach you here in this ministry. God gave it to me almost seven years ago. Glory to God. And it's very effective. Very effective. Because sometimes we'll feel like 
We're going to get to Jonah in a minute. Sometimes we feel like, you know, if there's no, I, in other words, I want God to convict me. The truth of the matter is God's not going to convict you until there is correction. Come on. That's just like you want your children to do the right thing. Well, the moment you correct them, then they can be convicted. But if you don't say anything to your children, how are they going to know they're in error? Come on. That's just like God. If God is correcting us all the time and he's saying, daughter, don't do that. My son, don't do that. If you continue to do that, you're going to reap the repercussion for it. You're going to reap the reward for it. Come on here. The Bible says every man is going to give an account unto God for what they have done in his body. So we need to start cleaning the house now, right? <laughs> Listen, we need to start cleaning up now. Okay. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, some of you, glory to God, you need to start cleaning the house now. You need to say, Lord, clean this temple. Is, is contaminated, is filthy, I got malice, I got strife in here, I got jealousy in my heart. God, clean this temple. Please, God, clean this temple. Hiya, did he, oh, shy. See, we praying for the wrong things. And when I say that, this is what I mean, because I hear God. We praying for houses and cars and, and, and marriages and babies and all of this stuff. We praying for more money and your heart is wicked. Hallelujah. Here in this ministry, we are reflecting upon Psalm 51 and 10. We just came off our water consecration. Glory to God, which we're going to continue it. Amen. We just came off of 31 days of drinking one gallon of water a day. That, that was our water consecration. And we were focusing on Psalm 51. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 51. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where David said, created me a clean heart, oh God. That's right, Elder Kevin. You got it, man of God. Thank you. Amen. Created me a clean heart, oh God. And renew, renew a right spirit within me. Psalm 51 is a psalm of repentance. And this is where the church is. We need to be in a place of repentance. Lord, forgive me for the sins that I committed years ago that I never repented for. God, forgive me for the sins against my brothers, my sisters, even if I looked at somebody wrong. Higher did he, oh, shy. Come on here. And if your face ain't get delivered yet, then guess what? You might be looking at some people and saying something with your face. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Have you ever needed to get your face delivered? Listen, I'm just saying, I'm, you know, we're going to be real tonight. Come on here. Your face will just tell it all. Somebody say, why are you looking at me like that? And you say, oh, well, I'm not looking at you for nothing. I, you know. Ain't nothing wrong. And it's all on your face. Come on here. <laughs> and they like, what's wrong with you? You upset? No, I'm not upset. You looking like you don't like me right now. Oh, I love you. No, you don't. Your face is saying something totally different. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know I love to laugh, but it's the truth, right? Come on. Come on, somebody. When you have the joy, higher than the old shop. Listen, when you have the joy of the Lord, that is your strength. When you have the joy of God, listen, it, it just bubbles up out of you. You'll be smiling. People looking like, why are you smiling? I'm happy. I'm happy in God. You know, because higher than the old shot. I feel deliverance right here for somebody. Because your spirit is being changed. Your heart is being changed. Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. God is doing the work in you and then through you. Come on. We, we, got, it, we got it messed up. We, we believe that God does the outward work first. Uh-uh. Somebody shout, he changes my inner man first. Higher did your shot. I talked about detox today on Facebook, and I meant exactly what I said in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we need a detox. Sometimes we need a, a detox in our physical body and a spiritual detox. One thing I don't like is fakeness, and another thing I don't like is toxicity. I, I can't do negativity. I, I just can't. As being God's servant, me and toxicity don't get along. It's either you love God or you don't. Come on. It's either you love the ministry or you don't. Come on. It's either you like me or you don't. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, you know what? I said, I'm going to listen to you this time. Because God, is. he told me last year and the year before that to cut the tie with some people, and I didn't. 
I got to be honest. And I did not. You know why? Because I, I had compassion for them. And I said, you know what? I'm going to let them stay connected. And God began to reveal. God was showing me. <sighs> you have to pay attention to what God is showing you. Who am I talking to tonight? See, I can only tell you about myself. I can't tell you about nobody else. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. That is telling you a snake is a snake. Listen, a snake is still a snake, Sister Izina. But what will happen is the way that they hiss will sound a little bit different. Or their color might change, you know. If you read up on snakes, snakes, the, you know, the snakes say that, it said that snakes, they, 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 they shed their skin. And in certain seasons, they can look like something totally different. Somebody shot is still a snake. Come on here. Somebody shout higher than the old shy. It's just somebody just hashtag. It's still a snake. It might slither a little different, you know, but it's still a snake. Come on here. And it still got it out for you. Higher than the old shy. Cause see the spirit in that snake wants to take you out. Oh, we shifting right here again. Listen, that spirit in that snake, read up on the Python. Somebody read up on the Python. I want you to read up on the Python because when I read it, it just blew my mind. This was five years ago, Sister Sequita. Almost five years ago, the Lord had me to study snakes because there was so many around me. And I even had a dream about snakes. And when I had that dream, I began to study about snakes. And the Lord took me to the Python. And when he told me about the Python, that Python spirit, higher than the Osha, is no joke. Because the python wraps itself around you at the bottom where you don't even know. Red man Woo! Jesus have mercy. You don't even know that that python is getting close to you. <laughs> you don't even know. You have no idea. Hey, hey. Because it'll come. It'll camouflage itself. Come on here. Who am I helping tonight? Because <laughs> I'm telling you, God revealed it to me and it helped me. Hey, hey. Higher than the old shot. So anytime God reveals something to me, I give it to his people. So I'm giving it to you all tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, the revelation of the python. Mm -hmm. I read up on it. It says it comes around and it'll, it'll, it'll start slowly wrapping itself around you and you don't even know the the this and the python it got to stay close to you though red man shot listen and this is why you got to cut the tie this is why you got to cut the head and the tail Woo! my god how you did your shot i feel like getting up running all around my house y'all you have to cut mm. we getting to that part sister pamela that's right it wants to squeeze the life out of you we're gonna get to that in a minute Glory be to God. Higher than the Osha. But see, when you recognize that there's a python spirit around you, you know what you got to do? You got to cut the head and the tail. Let me tell you about a snake. I'm telling y'all I had to read up on it. When you cut a, the head of a snake off, do you know that that snake still has life in it? To where it can wiggle. Uh-oh. I need y'all to, I need somebody to catch this real quick. That snake can wiggle back to its body. And become whole again. Y'all see how big my eyes are? That's how I was looking when God gave me the revelation. I was like, oh my goodness. I said, Jesus. That's what I said, Pastor Kelly. I'm like, whoo. So you got to cut the head and the tail. And throw away the body. <laughs> Listen. Throw it. Look. Look. If you're going to cut it in three different pieces... All right, head, you got to go there. The body, you got to go there. And the tail, you got to go to a whole nother place. Because you ain't going to hire the deal, shy. You ain't going to reconnect yourself. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Somebody shout no. <laughs> Come on, somebody shout no. Ain't going to happen. Not in 2021. Some of you done been through so much H-E double hockey sticks that guess what? You ain't got time for no snakes. Woo! Some of you done been through so much, you're like, look, I see the devil. Devil, I see you, and you're not going, no, not this time. Somebody shout, not this time. Some of you, God has allowed you, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord says, some of you, he has allowed you. That's right, Evangelist Rochelle. Some of you, the enemy has allowed you to stay in certain situations to teach you not to do it again. Because of what he has for you. 
Come on here. See, when God, that's why you got to cut it off. You got to cut it off even when it hurts. Oh, this is good tonight. Even when it hurts. I don't know who I'm talking to. I just heard that. Even when it hurts. Because guess what? You think the snake is coming to bring you, you know, gifts and you think it's coming to bring you blessings and you know you don't really understand that it's a snake you don't really understand yeah yeah you, you don't really understand it that's why you let it get so close to you Whew, it's real good tonight right woman of god listen you let it get so close to you to the point to where you said maybe it's gonna change oh some of y'all done said that too oh i know i know it's a snake i know they got a python spirit but you know what maybe it's gonna change one day Still a snake. Hi, did the old shot. That's just like people that have dogs. Listen, I love dogs, but I love dogs from afar. Let me just help somebody. All the dog lovers, please don't get upset when I say this. Those of you that love dogs, whether they big dogs, little dogs, medium-sized dogs, I don't like dogs. <laughs> Never did. Even when I got one for my children, I got my children a little tiny little shih tzu dog, and I ain't like that dog either. It started growling at me, okay? Because it knew I didn't like it. <laughs> But let me just say this. And the dog was $750. I'm like, this little tiny dog. And guess what? Then I had to buy heart medicine for the dog because the dog had a bad heart. I said, oh, I really don't like you now. <laughs> Listen, that dog became a responsibility. Sabrina, to this day, she like, mommy, can we get another dog? Okay, all right. I know you love your dog, Pastor Darlene. Let me just say this. I want, I want to make a point. <laughs> Listen, laughter is good for the soul. Listen, laughter is good like medicine. I want to say this. A dog is a dog is a dog. If you step on that dog's tail, its reaction is to bite you. I don't care how cute. I don't care how nice. I don't care how fluffy and beautiful. Oh, that's just my little chihuahua. Okay. You rub that dog the wrong way, it's going to bite you. I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> right? Okay, you're a cute little dog. <laughs> Listen, what am I saying through the Holy Ghost? You can't say that a dog is like a cat. You can't compare. No, the dog is a dog. We got to stop comparing and saying, well, maybe, you know, it, it looks like. No, no, no. What is it? What, what is it for real? Because if it's a snake, it's a snake. How do we get here tonight? <sighs> if it ain't been, listen, listen, let, let me just help somebody right here. Because somebody may say, I, I need you to break it down just a little bit more profitless. Okay, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> listen, somebody may say, well, you know, Jesus was with the tax collectors and Jesus was with the prostitutes, you know. And Jesus was around the sinners. He sure was. But Jesus was God in the flesh. Some of you ain't strong enough for that. Come on. Hallelujah. Listen, some of you may not be that strong. Come on. That's just like a person who just got saved from drinking alcohol. Why would you go into the speakeasy the next day after you just got saved? You ain't even get delivered yet. But you got people to say, I'm going in the speakeasy and I'm going to save everybody. I'm going to tell everybody about the Lord. A year later, you see that person just back out there again because they're not strong enough. Ah, you did your shot. There were even times, let me go a little deeper. There were times that God delivers you from a spirit. You got to stay away from that spirit. God deliver you from a spirit. You got to stay away. We still talking about detox. Come on. Why? Because the Bible speaks about it in the book of Matthew. The Bible says that, that when a spirit has gone out of a man, Holy Ghost teaching tonight, when a spirit has gone out of a person, the Bible says that it comes back with seven more. Y'all know I'm telling the truth tonight. Come on, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Somebody shout, I'm going to read my Bible. <laughs> Let me give you all the scripture. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, how you did your shot? This is why you got to be careful. What does the Bible say? That those spirits come back and they're coming back. They're coming back to see if that house has been swept or garnished. In other words, swept out, cleaned out completely. I need you all to share this. I need you all to share this video. Hallelujah. 
Tag somebody in this in this video that needs to be delivered. Come on, tag somebody. I want to pull up this scripture real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's the word of God. It's God's word. And that's why I love God. Listen, I love him so much because the Lord always speaks to us. Amen. It's Matthew chapter 12. Mm-hmm. Thank you all for tagging a few people in. Yes. Come on. Sharing is caring. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. Glory to God. See, that's why it's a booze all on my head. Um, Pastor Darlene, that's why people don't like me. Amen. Because I speak truth and God's people gets delivered. Amen. Glory to God. That's why I need some intercessors on the wall that can pray. Hi, did your shot. Yes, Lord, that can continue to pray. Mm hmm. Because people get set free. And that's what Jesus came to do. What was what was the Great Commission? The Great Commission is that, amen, we go into the highways and the byways and compel men and women to come back to God. But Jesus also said that he came to set the captive free. Come on. How can I say that I love you when I see you bound? How you did the old child? And I'm just speaking out in the atmosphere. How, how can I say I'm a child of God or I'm a vessel of the Lord and I see you bound and I'm just like high-fiving you? No, we're going to pray. Come on. No, no, we're going to pray. How you did the old child? If we got to get to the root of it, which may be a generational curse. Oh, we're going to pray about that. Come on here. How you did the old child? We're going to pray. Somebody shout, it's time to pray. Thank you, Jesus. And see, Jesus' ministry, let me just go a little deeper here. The ministry of Jesus, when he was on the earth, he prayed. Listen, he prayed. He taught the disciples how to pray. Even though he knew Judas was going to betray him, he still taught him how to pray. <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. Jesus taught the disciples. Let me, let me stay focused. Let me, let me, let me, let me just bring it on in. My God, my God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. That's why right. it's time to pray. Hallelujah. It's time to pray. It's time to war. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? Cause see, even the old church, glory to God, they had power because they prayed. Hallelujah. And see, this is a prayer ministry. So that's what we do. We pray here. Oh, come on. Glory to God. It was time that we would be on the prayer line till five in the morning, casting out devils. Come on. I had a few prophets that would connect with me. Glory to God. And we get on that prayer line. We prophesy the word of the Lord. Higher did the Osha. Glory to God. And we would cast the devil out. You remember that, Sister Isaiah? You remember. Glory to God. We'd be on the prayer line till five in the morning. The sun start coming out through the blind. I'm like, what time is it? Somebody shout real ministry. Hi, did the old shot. Come on, somebody shout real ministry. We would stay on the line and we would pray. Hiya, Shatanda Baha. Glory to God until people would get on the line. And guess what? That's right, Sister Stacy. You remember that. You can get on the line three o'clock in the morning. Woo! Hey, hey! Hiya, did the old shot. And we was on that prayer line praying in the name of Jesus. Glory until the power of God fell. Mm. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hiya, did the old shot. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you got saved on the prayer line. Some of you got delivered. Oh, whew. we going back to that. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. How you did the old shot? We going back to real prayer. Yes, Lord. Hey, how you did the old shot? And you start praying till you feel better. Whew. Glory. Thank you. You start praying till, till you know it's getting better. Thank you, Jesus. There's some intercessors that are being touched right now. Woo, yes, God, I hear you. I'm just going to wave my cloth. Is that all right? Hey, hey. For the intercessors to be ignited tonight. That you're going to pray until heaven answers. That you're going to pray until God give you the unction that it is well. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Yes, God, I hear you. Hi, I'm just going to wave my cloth for the intercessors right there. Mm-hmm. 
Haya Shatanda Baha. Who received the power of God, received the glory of God, received the fire, higher than the old shot, received the anointing of God. Hallelujah. So that when you pray, glory to God, you can pull down them strongholds. When you pray, you know that heaven is answering. When you pray, higher than the old shot, you know that God has shifted everything concerning what you're praying about. Mm. Woo! My God, my God, my God. Hey, hey. Higher than the old shot. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. She said, power will fall and I will be out. And whoever entered it, you know what? My God, my God. Listen, hallelujah. We be stretched out sometimes, y'all. Okay, we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna bring it in. Let me let me bring it in. Mm. Hey, hey, higher than the old shot. Thank you, Jesus. And then we go right into our revivals. Hallelujah. We have three revivals a year, every March, every July, and every December. Glory to God. And the power of God, higher than the Osha, will begin to fall even more at our conferences. Thank you, Jesus. We get ready to get back to that. Amen. Yes, Lord, I hear you. All right, so Jonah, glory to God, in his disobedience. All right, so, um, and then we got to read Psalm 1. <laughs> Amen. Evangelist Valencia, you are a woman of God. Listen, she used to come out to the revivals, listen, and sell her beautiful jewelry. Glory to God. But the woman of God, she said, listen, I'm going to come on in that conference room and get that anointed. Hiya, did he, oh, shot. Thank you, Jesus, because we always had a room for our vendors. You know, God would begin to move. I mean, it was just always, it was just always a, a glorious experience. Let me say that. That's a good word right there. It was always glorious. You know, God would always meet us. Amen. On our prayer line, he would meet us at our conferences. Uh, Pastor Darlene says, need one in North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. That's why I'm here. Hi, Adidio oh, Sha. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And we're going to have it too. Amen. And God's going to get the glory. Hallelujah. He's going to get all the glory. Let's read Jonah. All right. Because somebody needs to hear about Jonah. Hallelujah. Jonah chapter two. So Jonah chapter two. You know what? Let's go up to one. Let's go. Jonah chapter one. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right. Jonah one and one. All right. Jonah one and one. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now the Bible says, now the word of the Lord had came to Jonah, the son of Amittai saying, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city and cry against it for their wickedness has come before me. Mm -hmm. But Jonah had arose and fled to Tarshish and went to Joppa. And he had found a ship going down to Tarshish and he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go, to go with them into Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. Did you all hear that? So he had to pay the fare. Blessings to you, woman of God, Dana. He had to pay the fare to go to a place that God didn't even tell him to go to. I told you all disobedience is going to cost you. Come on. It's going to cost all of us. Amen. Disobedience costs us. So verse four said, but the Lord has sent out a great wind. Somebody shout God sent the storm. The Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship would be like to be broken. The winds was just so crazy that they thought the ship was going to break in half. The Bible goes on to say in verse five, then the mariners were afraid and cried out to every man unto his God, lowercase g, and cast forth the wars that were on the ship unto, um, yeah, were on the ship into the sea to lighten it. So they took everything off the ship thinking it was going to lighten it so that they wouldn't sink and so that they, the ship would not break in half. But Jonah had gone down to the sides of the ship and he lay there and fell asleep. Now, let me just give you the revelation that God gave me in that. It's always the one that is disobedient that's causing a storm that goes to sleep. <laughs> Come on here. Sometimes they don't even care about their disobedience. Have you ever been in disobedience and you just didn't care? You was like, look, whoever is affected, so be it. Come on, because that's what Jonah did. He went down and fell asleep. He knew he was the cause of the storm. Come on. So the shipmaster had came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise. There's that word arise again. 
So now the first time God told Jonah to arise, right? In um, one and one. In Jonah 1 and 1, he told them, I'm sorry, Jonah 1 and 2, he said, arise. So they, that was the first arise. Now you got the shipmaster telling him, arise. So that's a, that's somebody else saying, get up, get up, Jonah. Get up, right? And he says, he says, what meanest thou, O sleeper, arise and call upon thy God? And if it be so, that your God would think of us that we would not die. That we would not perish. Verse 7. And they said unto every one of his fellow, come and let us cast lots. <laughs> right? Let us cast lots that we may know who is the cause of this evil that has come upon us. Isn't that something? So they cast lots and the lot fell on who? Jonah. Isn't that amazing? Verse 8. And they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee. What, why has this evil come upon us? What is your occupation? Where did you come from? What is your country? And who are your people? So now they begin to ask Jonah and say, listen, all right, we know you're the cause of the storm, but can you tell us why we're in the midst of a storm? Can, can you just explain to us who you are, Jonah? So Jonah began to say that I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Then he goes on to say, Verse 10, then were the men exceedingly afraid. So now they got more afraid. Exceedingly afraid means they became more afraid now. Because now they're like, wait a minute. Your God is who? <laughs> the God of the earth? Wait a minute. The God of the land? And we about to be destroyed. Right? So verse 10 goes on to say, for the men had knew that he had fled away from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. See? So Jonah, Jonah began to speak about his disobedience. Come on. And, and that's just like when you're in disobedience, you know you are wrong. You, you can't tell me, you can't tell nobody that you don't know when you're wrong. Come on. Jonah began to confess to them and say, listen, I'm the cause of the storm. Let's skip down. Let's go down. Because the point I was trying to make, amen, is that in our disobedience is going to cost us something. It's going to cost you something, right? But look at God. Look at God here. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you something. So the Bible goes on to say in verse 13, nevertheless, the men had rowed hard now to bring it to land. So now they're rowing even harder to get the ship to the land because they like, maybe we can make it. <laughs> but they could not. Verse 13, for the sea had wrought. In other words, the tempest had became stronger now. Mm. Glory to God. See how bad God is? Listen, he, can you imagine God looking down and he can see them? God can see them trying to make it, trying to make an escape. <laughs> Listen, y'all, God is amazing. I don't know why we think we can escape the judgment. Oh, that's good right there. Now, I don't know why even in our disobedience, we feel like we can get away. I'm just saying, I don't know who that's for tonight. Listen, but here's a rescue. Here's a rescue. Verse 14. Therefore, they cried unto the Lord. And said, we beseech you. So they begin to beg God, Sister Sequita. They said, we beseech you. Oh, Lord, we beg you that you would not let us perish for this man's life. Can you just save us? That's what they cried out for. You do. They cried out to Jonah's God. Can you just save us, please? And so they laid not their innocent blood. I'm, I'm still in verse 14. They said, oh, Lord, has, has, I'm sorry, has done as it pleased thee. Verse 15. And so they took Jonah up. Right? They took him up and they cast him forth into the sea. And the sea has stopped this raging. I'm still in my message tonight. I'm still in the message tonight because there are some of you that have people just like that in your life. And sometimes you got to pick them up and throw them overboard. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And if you're the one in disobedience, here's your rescue. So they took up Jonah and they cast him forth into the sea and the sea stopped her raging. And then the men had feared the Lord exceedingly and offered up a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. So they gave a sacrifice unto God because this, the storm had stopped. They gave a sacrifice to Jonah's God because the storm had stopped. Look how powerful that is. They knew that they were saved. They said, you know what? We're going to make a sacrifice and we're going to make vows to your God, Jonah, because your God stopped the storm. Listen, I'm telling you, God is powerful. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Whew, yes, God, I hear you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. And then the men had feared the Lord exceedingly. They made a sacrifice unto the Lord, verse 16, and they made vows. Verse 17, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. 
And Jonah was in the belly of that fish three days and three nights. That was his rescue. Come on. Sometimes God has to get you in a place of rescue. And it don't feel good either. Come on. And our disobedience, it does not feel good. Amen. Come on. Some of you may be in that place tonight, but God will send a rescue. Amen. So verse, I'm sorry, chapter two, verse one says, then Jonah had prayed unto the Lord, his God out of the belly's fit, out of the fish's belly. And he said, he said, I cry for reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. I cried that thou heardest my voice. Mm. Verse three, for thou has cast me into the deep into the midst of the sea and the floods come past about me. All the billows and thy waves have passed over me. So now Jonah is talking to God in the belly of the fish. Verse four, he says, then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again unto your holy temple. Mm, come on. And verse five, the waters come past about and even to the soul and the depth Closed me around about and the weeds had wrapped around my head. So now Jonah is talking about his experience. He's talking to God. He says, I went down to the mountains. I went to the bottom of the mountains. He said, the earth with her bars was about me forever. He goes on to say in verse six, yet has thou brought up my life from corruption. Oh Lord, my God. Verse seven, he goes on to say, when my soul fainted within me. I remember the Lord and my prayer came before me mm, unto thy holy temple. Verse eight, he goes on to say, and they that observe the lion vanities forsake not their own mercy. So, so Jonah is talking to God in the belly of the fish. Verse nine, he says, and I will sacrifice unto thee the, for the voice of thanksgiving. Whew, he says, I will pay that which I vowed. Can you all hear this confession from Jonah? See, it's not until you get to that place for real to where you can confess your sin. This is why I teach in this ministry, call the sin out. Whatever you did that was not pleasing unto God, you call that sin out in prayer. Don't just say, Lord, forgive me. No, God, forgive me for lying. Forgive me for cussing. Forgive me for fornicating. Forgive me for committing adultery. Lord, forgive me for stealing. Call that sin out. Make the devil out of a liar. Come on. See, Jonah got higher than the old shot. Yes, God, I hear you. There has to be more realness in prayer. I just heard that. Yes, God, I hear you. Verse 10, and the Lord has, has spoke unto the fish. God bless you tonight. The Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited out Jonah on the dry land. Come on. Come on. It, it vomited Jonah out on the dry land. Verse, um, chapter three, verse one. And the word of the Lord had came to Jonah a second time. Now this is God speaking a second time. Now the shipmaster told him to get up. So that was really the third time that Jonah had heard get up. Uh oh. So verse two says, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid you. Verse three. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of a three day journey. That lets us know that it took three days for Jonah to get to Nineveh in the belly of that fish. Cause three whole days he prayed. Come on. Three days and three nights. Jonah was in the belly of that fish and he prayed. So sometimes your deliverance is not overnight. Come on. Sometimes God will give you a rescue. He'll put you in a place and you have to pray and you got to repent and you got to turn. Amen. That was the point right there. Glory to God that I was trying to make. Hallelujah. About Jonah and his disobedience. Glory to God and how disobedience will cost us. Hallelujah. Let's continue here. Amen. So the word of the Lord, what God had given me, um, is whatever is dead, cut it off. Whatever is dead, cut it off because it's time to bear much fruit. All right. Whatever is dead in your life, if it's a dead relationship, a dead connection, cut it off. This is a word for somebody tonight. Cut it off. 
It's time to bear much fruit. Those of you on the prayer line, stay with us for about 15, 20 more minutes. Glory to God. Amen. That's right, proper this Camille. Correction, conviction, and change. You got it. Glory to God. Let God do it. I'm telling you, it works. Hallelujah. It works. Yes, Lord. And so the Lord said, whatever is bad, this is what he gave me. He said, tell my people whatever is bad, what is rotten. Because sometimes you can have fruit in your life, but it's rotten. And if you know anything about rotten fruit, it draws flies. Say lie. We're going to pause right here for a minute. Because I'm going to give you a little deeper revelation what God gave me in that. Whenever there's bad fruit around and it draw, it draws flies. Do you know what a fly comes from? A fly is a magnet. A maggot. If you study flies. Because see, all of this is natural and spiritual. Some of you are connected to people who have that same spirit. Well, how do I know that, Pastor? How do I know if they if they have a rotten, you know, rottenness about them or if they have rotten fruit? The Bible says you shall know them by the fruit that they bear, which means you have to discern. I want to walk slow with this. I don't want to rush through this. You have to discern if they have fruit first. And if the fruit is rotten or if it's ripe. Come on. How do you know if a person has ripe fruit? Because you can eat it. It's ready. Come on. Rotten fruit, you look at it and say, I don't want that. Hi, you did the old shot. I don't want that. I don't, I don't want that. That's not good for me. If I, if I digest that rotten fruit, it's going to make me sick. Have you, have you ever ate, eaten a rotten banana? You knew it was rotten by the way that it looked. Come on, but it, it just ain't taste too good, right? <laughs> you ever eat a rotten orange? Like, ooh, this is nasty, right? So rotten fruit don't taste good. It's the same thing, natural as well as spiritual, right? Y'all still with me? Okay, wonderful. So God is saying even, he says, anything that is also stuck and stagnated, let it go. Let it go because it's holding you down. The Lord also says anything that's bringing you down, any, any, um, conversation that's bringing you down, any connection that's bringing you down, cut it off, cut it off. The Lord says your connections are very, very, very important in this season and the seasons to come. God bless you, woman of God, Charlene. Amen. So let's turn to Numbers. Numbers chapter 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Let's turn to Numbers. Amen. That's in the beginning. You got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. All right? So you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Glory to God. Amen. That's the fourth book of the Bible. All right? So let's turn to Numbers. Numbers chapter 15. Those of you on our prayer line, stay right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Share with somebody. It's not too late. Amen. It's not too late to share on um, Facebook. It's not too late to share on Periscope with your followers. Amen. Be a blessing to somebody tonight. Be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Numbers chapter 15. Um, let's start reading at verse 30. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. Periscope, it says my battery is about to die, so I need y'all to jump on over to Facebook. <laughs> All right, those on Periscope, you can find me under Carmen Haywood. All right, Carmen Haywood on Facebook. You should see the live video there. Glory to God. Amen. If it goes out on Periscope, jump on over to Facebook with us, or you can jump on the prayer line. The number is 712-775-7031. The S is code 222-953-820 pound. All right. If someone that is on here on Periscope can type the prayer line number and the S is code. All right. For those that need to jump on over to the prayer line or Facebook live. All right. Let's read verse 30 and 31. It says, but the soul that doeth art presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Uh Oh, verse 31, because he has despised the word of the Lord. 
Mm. And has broken his covenant, mm, his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. I'm going to read that one more time. That's deep, right? Come on. So when God is saying sever the tie, it's in his word. When God is saying cut off, it's in his word. That's why when you're cutting off things that don't belong in your life and you're cutting off toxic relationships and people say to you, oh, that ain't of God. It's in his word. It's in his word. Come on. Somebody shout, it's in the word. It's in the word. Let's read it one more time. Numbers chapter 15, verse 30. It's in the word. Because people will say that, Pastor Darlene. They'll tell you, you know, they'll say, um, you a woman of God. You know, what you doing cutting people off for? You know, why you can't, you know, minister to them. You may have ministered to them already. You may have prayed for them already. But people have to want freedom. Somebody hashtag that. Come on, somebody hashtag that. You have to want freedom. Come on, you got to want to be set free. You have to want healing. Come on, we got to want to be delivered and stay delivered. Amen. Thank you all for joining tonight. Share this video if you will. Go ahead and share this broadcast. Be a blessing tonight. So it says verse 30 once again. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Family too. It doesn't matter. Amen. It doesn't matter. Now, we're going to touch family in a minute, Sister um, Stacy. Amen. Because even Jesus said, after my mother and father have forsaken me, the Lord will take me up. So listen, Jesus even said, look, I know I'm going to be taken up. When Jesus was here on the earth, listen. He said, after my mother and my father have forsaken me. Listen, he said, I know without a shadow of a doubt that the, that the father's going to take me up. I'm not worried about anything. <laughs> Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we need to be the same. All right. It's not that we don't love family, you know, because family is family. Amen. And you can't, you can't get away from that either. You know, those of you that may have family members who are not lovable. Let me just say that. You, you can't get away from that because you are a part of your family. You are part of that lineage. That That's your bloodline. <laughs> Amen. You just may be the curse breaker. Come on. Somebody shout, I'm the curse breaker. Glory to God. I'm the curse breaker in my bloodline. Hiya, did the old shot. You may be the one that's going to set the order in your family. Right? But you got to set it and be set apart. Oh, that's good right there. You got to set the standard but still be set apart. Oh, that's real good right there. Come on. We can't entangle in with the world and be separated also. Somebody shout, that's good right there. Let's continue. Verse 30. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord. So in other words, the same judgment comes upon that person, whether they are a stranger whether they were born in that land, it doesn't matter. Because God is saying that soul shall be cut off from among his people. All right? Verse 31, because he has despised the word of the Lord. Now, this is what that person has done. So anytime we're in disobedience, we are despising the word of God. Amen? Can I get an amen tonight? <laughs> Listen, anytime we're not obeying the Lord's commands... Obeying his commandments, we're in disobedience. The Bible says that that soul shall utterly be cut off for his iniquity. Iniquity is sin. Come on. Yes, we thank God for the blood of Jesus, but we can't just have the Old Testament working in our life. I'm sorry, the New Testament, I apologize, and not the Old Testament because the Old Testament still has value. You got the Ten Commandments in the first in the Old Testament that we still have to obey. We can't just, you know, because that's what people are saying now. You know, all oh, the blood, the blood covers everything. It sure does. The blood of Jesus was for our salvation. You know, the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of our sins so that when we repent, that he will forgive us. Come on. Amen. We still got to repent. Somebody shout, I still have to repent. I have to turn I have to confess my sin and I have to turn away from it. See, this is good sound teaching. Many people don't teach this. They tell you, you can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. You can be however you want. You don't have to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, you got some religions that'll say, mm -mm. you can do whatever you want. You can be however you want. You know, you don't have to have the nine fruit of the spirit. Come on. When God requires us to have his nine fruit, which is his attribute. Amen. Come on. Somebody show, I need the attribute of God. I need the non-fruit of his spirit. We're going to turn in a minute. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's turn in now. Is that all right? 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. That's right. We still have to repent. We still have to come before God clean with clean hands and a pure heart. Yes, Lord. We still got to come before God clean. And if we're not clean, guess what? We can ask him to clean us up. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Somebody shout, do it for me, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need God to clean you up tonight, say, Lord, do it for me. Lord, clean me up, God. Cleanse my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, do it for me, Lord. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. That, that leads us back to Psalm 51. Psalm 51 and 10, where David said, created me a clean heart, O God. Yes, and renew, renew, renew a right spirit within me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians chapter 5. Let's start reading at verse 22. What does it say? It reads, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Glory to God. Against such there is no law. Why does the Bible say against such there is no law? I'm going to give you all the revelation that God gave me. Because there are many laws that were in the Old Testament that the people had to abide by. And how many of you know, and I'm sorry if I'm coming against somebody's religion right here. You cannot follow all 400 and 500 laws that these religions have because you're too sinful. I'm just saying you need the blood of Jesus. Come on. The power of prayer. Healing and deliverance to manifest in your life. God bless you. Um, prophet Woodson, apostle Woodson. God bless you tonight, man of God. Hallelujah. It's no way you can obey all of those laws. I'm just saying now that's not that's not including the Ten Commandments because God He commands us to obey the commandments. But there is a difference. There is a difference. You know, you have religious now saying, Oh, you know, we do this and we keep this and we keep okay, you keeping all of that, but do you have the Holy Spirit? Sorry if I'm stepping on toes. I, I listen. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. <laughs> We have to come out of this tradition. We got to come out of religiosity. We have to come out of thinking that, you know, it's our way and no other way. In other words, when God is teaching you, amen, we have to be teachable. In other words, when you, when God gives you revelation of his scripture, you can't just take that one way and be like, oh, that's it. You know, and when God distinctively said, you need the Holy Ghost. Come on. When God distinctively told us we need the spirit of God. So if the spirit of God is not in your religion, in your belief, then I can't, I can't, I can't even be a part of it. You may want me to join and be a part of it, but if the Holy Spirit ain't there, you won't see me because I need the Holy Ghost. Come on. We need the Holy Spirit. Somebody hashtag. I need the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody hashtag, I can't make it without it. Hiya, did the old shot. The Bible even speaks about it, that when Jesus comes back, it's the power of God that's going to raise you up. It's not our flesh that's going to raise us up. We need the Holy Ghost, hiya, did the old shot, inside of us. Come on, I'm still in the book tonight. <laughs> Amen, a lot more, more pastors need to teach this though. Amen, we need the Holy Spirit. Glory to God to help us, to lead us. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. I don't know everything, but God does. <laughs> and if I follow his spirit, he'll lead me. Hey, hey. I'm going to say that again. I don't know everything. Come on here. But God does. The spirit of truth knows. Mm. Glory to God. And if I consult God, then guess what? He going to download in my spirit. Amen. He's going to give it to those who really want to hear what thus saith the Lord. Let us turn to Isaiah uh, chapter 18, verse 5. Somebody shout, whatever is dead, I need to cut it off. Come on, somebody shout that in your atmosphere. Everything that's dead, everything that's not prospering, everything that's not bearing forth fruit, I need to cut it off tonight. Higher did the old shot. I need to cut it off this morning, rather. It's after 12 a.m. Glory to God. Come on. Make that declaration in your atmosphere. I'm going to cut off 
everything that is dead in my life that's not bearing forth any fruit, I'm going to cut it off because God commanded me to. Isaiah chapter 18, verse 5. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Isaiah chapter 18, verse 5. Let's read that. And it reads, For the harvest, when the bud is perfect, the sour grape is ripening in the flower, and he shall both cut off the springs which, which, um, <laughs> which proneth and takes it away and cuts down the branches. All right. So this this scripture is pretty much saying how there's a harvest. And when a harvest comes, anything that does not belong in your harvest has to be cut away from it. The reason why is because it'll grow again. Anything that's not cut off, anything that's attached to your harvest. Oh, this is good tonight. Mm. Somebody catch this word tonight. Anything that is attached to what God is releasing in your life. If it's negative, if it's bad, it has to be cut off. Okay? It has to be cut off. Let's turn to John chapter 15, verse 2. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm cutting it off. I'm cutting it off. I, I got to release it. I have to let it go. Because your harvest has to be plentiful. Thank you, Jesus. And your harvest has to bud up the way that God wants it to. Amen. And it has to be prosperous. Somebody shout, my harvest is plentiful. Come on, somebody shout, my harvest is great. Yes, Lord. John chapter 15, verse 2. What does Jesus say here? That's right. That's right, woman of God. Amen. What does Jesus say in John chapter 15, verse 2? Let's go up to verse 1. Is that all right? Let's read verse 1. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that again. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes it away. Come on. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bear forth more fruit. All right. So this is the work of God. This is what he does in us. So if God is saying, if there's some things inside of us that need to be cut away so that more fruit can bear, then God will cut it off. He'll purge it. Come on here. He'll purge it. Why? Because it has to continue. We have to continue to bring forth more fruit. Right? Let's read verse three. Now you that are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. This is what Jesus says. Those of you that I cleaned up through my word. He says in verse four, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Come on here. Y'all following with the word tonight? A branch cannot bear forth fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. Come on. No more can you except you abide in me, saith the Lord. Come on. So we have to, first of all, we have to be in God. It starts in God. Come on. It starts in the will of God. Higher did the shot. It's some good teaching tonight. Listen, it starts with God. It starts in God. Amen. Because we have to be connected to him. Let's go back up to verse one. He says, I am the true vine. This is Jesus. He says, I'm the true vine. Mm. He says, and my father is the husbandman. He says, but every branch in me that beareth not forth fruit. He says, listen, if it ain't no fruit on it, it's taken away. Jesus says, I have to take it away because it's going to contaminate the vine. Higher did your shot. Woo. My God tonight. Hallelujah. And God is saying, listen, that's just like us. If we have something contaminated that is connected to us, God got to cut it. He got to sever it. If Even if it's something in us that don't belong. Oh, this is good tonight. God is purging somebody. Yes, God, I hear you. He says he's purging. He's cleansing even the thoughts. Glory to God. Yes, God, I hear you. Sometimes we need our thoughts to be cleansed. Come on. Sometimes we need our heart to be filtered. Hey, hey. Higher did the old shot. We need our spirit to be filtered. Who am I talking to tonight? Somebody shout, do it for me, Lord. Come on. Somebody shout, do it for me, Lord. Let's continue to read here. 
Jesus says in verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. Mm. He says, if you abide in me and I in him. Mm. He said, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Come on, this is the words of Jesus. He said, listen, if you don't abide in me and allow my, my father to be the husbandman, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Verse six, he says, and if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. Come on. So Jesus is saying, if you're not connected, you're going to be, listen, you ever see a branch, branches fall from the tree, right? The Bible goes on to say in verse six, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Withered means destroyed. Blessings to you, um, Sister Evans. I see you jumped off of Periscope or into Facebook. Wonderful. Amen. Um, Periscope is down. Glory to God. And so, let's continue to read here. The Bible says is withered. Withered means destroyed completely. Right? And men gather them. Gather all the branches that have fallen. And cast them into the fire. And they are burned. They are literally destroyed. Verse 7. One of my favorite verses here. Verse 7. If you abide in me. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Let's continue to read. Jesus says. Herein is my father glorified. See Jesus is letting us know. That when we do this. When we allow the spirit of the Lord to take those things out of us that do not belong. When we allow God to purge us and cleanse us, the father is happy. Listen, he says, this is what pleases my father. Whew, God, this is good tonight. He says, herein is my father glorified. Mm. He says that you may bear forth much fruit. So you be my, so shall you be my disciples. Come on, anybody desire to be a disciple? And a disciple is one who follows Christ. Come on, anybody desire to be a disciple? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant? Come on. See, if this type of preaching and teaching, I'm telling you, was released in more churches, people would really repent before God. There will be more repentance because we will realize we're not so wonderful, but Jesus is. People will realize they need God more than a prophecy. Hey, hey, shatanda baha. They will realize that they need the spirit of God more than chasing a prophetic word. Now, I love prophecy. I love prophecy. Don't get me wrong. I prophesy the word of the Lord in my sleep, literally. But I'm just saying, I don't mind prophesying the word of the Lord. Higher did he, oh child. But we have to get out of this just wanting a prophetic word. This is the prophetic word. God is saying anything that's dead in your life, cut it off. Allow the spirit of the Lord to uproot it. Yes, God. Allow the spirit of God to take it away. Higher did he, oh child. Because God says he's come tonight. To sever the tie. He's come tonight to break those things off that don't belong in your life. He's come tonight to uproot it and to destroy it. Woo. Yes, God, I hear you. Higher did the Osha. And I feel the fire of God being released right here because God is burning up those things that don't belong in our lives. 2021. This is the year of the doer. Come on. 2021, the year of God's servants. Come on, it's going to be hard for you to be a servant and you can't put your hand to the plow and keep on going in God. The Bible says, listen, we can't put our hand to the plow and look back. Come on, let God purge. Let God uproot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Might have to change your number. Listen, let God do it. Let the Lord do it. Let God do it. Receive this word tonight and let God do it, people of God. Hallelujah. Give God some praise in this atmosphere. Thank God for his word tonight. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Listen, thank God for his word tonight. We're going to read Matthew 21 in closing. Matthew 21 is after 12 a.m., but it's okay. It's all right. 
It's all right. Glory to God. Hi, it is your shot. Thank you, Jesus. We have our first class tomorrow night for prophetic mentorship. I am excited. Amen. To teach our new students. Glory to God. Hallelujah. About the prophetic. About themselves being prophetic. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. We are excited. Amen. For tonight's class. Our first class is tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I did have one spot left, but amen. We're going to just conclude it. We're going to close it up. Glory to God. Amen. Um, and the students that are already registered will be the students that I teach. Amen. Starting on tonight. So we thank God for our prophetic mentorship class. Um, the next one will be in April. The next one will be in April. For those that are asking, we're going to have our next class in April. All right. That registration is going to um, probably be around March the 10th. I'm going to open it up um, for those who want to have the class in April. So you can look for that. All right. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter 21. Stay with me, y'all. Stay with me. Because I got to give you this last scripture. Matthew 21 and 19. Hallelujah. Those of you that are still on, click that share button if you will. Amen. Share before you exit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. What does Jesus say here? And when he has saw the fig tree. Okay, you know what? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back a little bit here. Thank you, Father. All right, let's go up to 17. Okay, let's go up to 17 so you can understand why Jesus went to the fig tree. Okay? All right, 17 says, and they, he had left them. He had left them and went out into the city, um, into Bethany. And he had lodged there. So Jesus had stayed there. Verse 18. Now in the morning, as he had returned to the city, he became hungry. All right. He became hungry. Verse 19. And when he had saw the fig tree in the way, he came to it and he found nothing on the fig tree. He said, but leaves. And he said to it, there's no fruit that has grown on this tree and no fruit will grow on this tree. Henceforward forevermore. And presently the fig tree withered away. So Jesus cursed the fig tree because when he went to it, there was no figs on it. Anything that's supposed to produce that is not producing in your life mm, has to be destroyed. Mm. If only five of you catch this word tonight, my job is, is complete. Hiya, did the old shot. Ha, shatanda baha. If five of you receive this word tonight, my job, my job is complete. I did what God told me to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For those of you that received this word, listen, I want you to make this declaration. Thank you, Minister Tanya. Let me pin the information. Glory to God. Listen. Hallelujah. I want you to make this declaration. Thank you, Father. I want you to make this declaration. Glory to God. That you will not allow anything that is dead in your life to remain. How you did your shop? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, for those of you, okay, I'm gonna put it in the middle. For those of you who really received this word, I don't want you to just say you receive it. I want you to make this declaration in your atmosphere. I done touched the phone and it done got messed up. That's all right. <laughs> Amen. We're gonna keep on going, okay? Hallelujah. Listen, for those of you, yes, Lord, just bear with me for one second, you all. Amen. I think it's I think it's clear now. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. For those of you that receive this word tonight. Okay, there it is. That's better. Okay. For those of you that receive this word tonight, I want you to make this declaration. I want you to say it. Because a lot of times we'll say, I received the word. Those of you on the prayer line, I want you to say it. I want you to say it in your atmosphere. I am cutting off. Everything that is dead in my life. Mm -hmm. Everything that's not bearing for fruit, I'm cutting it off. God is saying some things he's going to cut off and some things he's going to allow you to cut off. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave me that before we even got on the call. 
before we even got on the live. The Lord says, I'm empowering my people tonight. Mm. The strength and the ability mm, to be able to cut those things away that do not belong. God's anointing has been released tonight. And the anointing comes to destroy the yoke. So his anointing has been released upon this broadcast, upon our prayer line, even on Periscope. To destroy the yokes in your life. And those things that continue to have you go around a cycle. Mm. Those things that continue to have you in your mindset. Feeling like, you know what? I need a change. Come on. I need a change. The only time change can come is when your mindset begins to shift. Mm. If your mindset doesn't shift, your body will not respond mm. because your body has to respond to something that's going on up here. Come on. Once it hits here, it hits here. And once it hits here, it hits your spirit. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, thinketh in his heart. So is he. Whatever we think, it goes to our heart and it becomes us. That's good, right? Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, right? Unforgiveness. That's how unforgiveness stays in the heart because you can't seem to let it go. My God. See, unforgiveness. Let me help somebody because I hear the Lord say many of you have unforgiveness. Unforgiveness stops your deliverance. It, 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 it puts your deliverance at a halt. You can want to be delivered. You can... You can it, it just, it, it stops your deliverance. It stops your healing. Unforgiveness stops your breakthrough. My God, my God. Somebody got the answer tonight. Why hasn't my breakthrough come yet? Unforgiveness. Just release it and let it go. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The stony heart comes. Unforgiveness comes. The black heart comes, whatever, however you want to say it. That stony heart, God says he'll make it a heart of flesh when you forgive. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got to press. You got to press your way tonight. Higher did the old shot. You got to press for your freedom. Come on. Higher did the old shot. Come on. I'm going to pray in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Get in the posture right here. Amen. For God to, to release you. Higher did he Ask God to release you from what is holding you captive. Ask God to release you from those thoughts. Higher did he Osha. Higher did he Osha. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Sister Stacy, inbox me that question. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer you, all right? Hallelujah. She says, How do you know if you're truly forgiven? If you're truly forgiven or if you truly forgave the person. Because there is a difference. Hi, did he Osha. Thank you, Jesus. I'm ready to pray. Ah, yes, God. And we're going to get off the uh, Facebook Live and we're going to continue on um, our prayer line tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hi, did he Osha. Like I said, if it's only five of you that received this word tonight, to God be the glory. Amen. It's 33 and we had about 12 on Periscope and I believe we have 18 callers on the line tonight. It's okay. Amen. Because when the word goes forth, it's those who hear the word of God. The Bible says, he that has an ear, just one, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. He that has an ear, just one, just one, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Just release them and let it go. Come on, release those people that hurt you, that did you wrong. Release them and let it go. Because your deliverance stands nigh. Your healing is right in front of you. Come on, and you have to forgive. You know, there's a saying that hurt people hurt people. Come on, glory to God. And some of you are believing God for love, relationships, and possible marriage. You can't go into something and you're, you're still wounded. You're still hurt. You've never forgiven the person that you were just with. 
or the relationship that's severed or the person that did you wrong, the mistreatment, the abuse, the sabotage, the whatever happened. You have to ask God to forgive that person. You have to, you have, you have to forgive that person and ask God to forgive you. Amen. It's just that simple, but the enemy will make it hard. The devil loves to make things hard. Jesus says in his word in closing, and we're going to pray. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Come on. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Glory to God. Higher did your shot. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Tonight is your night to release it all. Tonight is your night to just give it. Listen, give it all over to God. You know, if you got to write the person's name down and say, Lord, this is what so-and-so did to me. God, you know what they did. And I'm asking you to heal my heart. That's the first step. That's the first step. That's the first step. That's the first step. Because you are acknowledging that you are hurting. A lot of times you can, a lot of people cannot forgive because they don't want to, they don't want to um, identify with the fact that they are hurting. If you're hurting, say you're hurting. Come on. That's how you get healed. Come on. I've never seen a person go in an emergency room and they say, what are your symptoms? And the person just sat, stood there and just looked. They said, no, I have a runny nose. I had a cough. I have a, a temperature. You know, when you want help, come on here. You give the symptoms. Come on. When you want help, though. Oh, that's good right there. Mm. When you want help, you'll say, these are my... Ha, I felt the release right there. You will say, I'm hurting. I'm going through. I feel abandoned. I feel rejected. Mm. Glory to God. Higher did your shot. Even if you got to say, I feel unloved. I feel like no one loves me because everybody that came in my life hurt me. That's when you need God to heal you so that you can trust again. Because there is someone that will come into your life. Come on. There are, there are people who will love you and who will treat you right. Come on. Come on. So you have to know that it will happen. If God spoke it over your life, it will come to pass. But this is a time of healing for the body of Christ. Come on. This is a time of deliverance for the body of Christ. God says anything that's dead, cut it off. Glory to God. Cut it off. Higher did the old shot. Whatever you got to do to get free and stay free. Come on. Cut it off in Jesus name. Father, we thank you tonight. Yes, Father God. Father, we thank you for the moving of your spirit, oh God. Father, I thank you for even the prayer that has gone forth in the beginning, God. And Lord, we're sealing this word in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, I just ask God that you would begin to search the hearts of your people, Lord. Even as this word has gone forth, Father, whatever it is that they're struggling with tonight, whatever it is that may be weighing upon them, Father, that you would lift the heavy burdens in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever it is that they are holding on to that is keeping them bound or keeping them held captive. Father, I pray tonight that you would give them the strength to release it and let it go. Father, anything that's toxic, anything that's negative, any relationships. Lord, I ask right now in Jesus' name that you give them the strength and the ability, Father, to sever the tie. Lord, I thank you for their new beginnings, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for their new connections, oh God. I thank you, yes, God, I hear you. Higher did your shot for the new joy that is going to come into their lives. Father, I thank you as they forget their past, even the past wounds, the past hurts, Father. Oh God, and as you begin to heal them in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the new, yes, God, I hear you, that is going to birth forth in their life. Father, I thank you even now that when we forget our past, we let go of the old. God, you will thrust us forward into the new. Father, we thank you and we praise you now and we glorify you. 
Lord, I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for this word tonight. I thank you for every person that is going to receive the word tonight. And Lord, I just thank you for the moving of your spirit on this broadcast and on our prayer line tonight. Father, I ask that you would continue to move mightily by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, those who are expecting higher did your shot. Mm. Oh God, for the manifestation of this word, Father, I pray that you will release it unto them tonight, this morning, in Jesus' mighty name. I bind every spirit of backlash and retaliation that will come against myself, come against his ministry, that will try to come against God's people. I thank you right now, Father, for releasing the fire of God. Higher did your shot and burning up every attack of the evil one. Father, I even thank you right now that no weapon mm, that is formed against us will be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises up against your people in judgment will be condemned in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we praise you now and we glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Pray. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. If you agree with that prayer tonight, people of God, just shout amen in your atmosphere. Hallelujah. For those of you that receive this word, amen, and you desire to sow into the word, glory to God. Now your seed is going to seal the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your seed into good soil, this ministry is going to seal the word. God's going to give you the strength to be able to sever any and everything that is in your life. Glory to God. That is causing you to be weighed down. Some of you deal with depression. Three days you depressed, two days you happy. Come on here. Some of you are dealing with all kinds of issues of struggling and going through. Sow your seed tonight. And watch God uproot everything that's toxic, everything that was bringing you down, every relationship that was hindering your progress. Mm. Who I feel God moving tonight. Higher did the Osha. The Lord says, sow your seed and name it new beginnings. Name your seed new beginnings. I promise you. Higher did the Osha. God's gonna birth forth new joy. Yes, God, I hear you. There's going to be a new joy that's going to come up out of your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And I hear the Lord saying, the old is passed away. Behold, I will do a new thing, saith the Lord. He says, old things passed away. Mm, glory to God. Woo. Somebody need to lift your hands high right here. I feel deliverance. I feel God moving and touching somebody. He says, old things, higher did he your shot. Even the memory. God's going to remove it. Higher. Shatana Baha. Glory to God. Some of you deal with the memory of the abuse. Some of you deal with the memory. It keeps coming back up. Higher. Shatana Baha. The Lord says he's going to sever that tonight. Mm. Glory to God. You're going to wake up in the morning refreshed, revived, renewed, and restored. Woo. Higher did he Osha. God's going to do something supernatural in your sleep tonight. Woo, yes, God. Higher did the Osha for those who receive this word tonight. Amen. So get your seed in the ground. Glory to God. Listen, pray and ask God the seed amount. Amen. What he wants you to sow tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Higher did the Osha. I feel God destroying some yokes tonight. Reman Sukoda the Osha. I feel God pulling down some strongholds tonight. Mm -hmm. Even the opinions of people. Some of you care about the opinions of people. Yes, God, I hear you. Mm. I'm trying to get off, but I got to say this. Mm. Some of you are moved by the opinions of people. And how people see you and how they perceive you. And that has caused you to become stuck and stagnated. Mm. <sighs> my God, my God. You're going to wake up in the morning and you ain't going to care nothing about nobody's opinion. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? Woo, God's going to give you a new mindset. Hey. Yes, Lord. Mm. He's going to give you a new mindset. How you did your shot? Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. I felt that in the spirit. Yes, Lord. He's going to give you a new mindset. The things you used to worry about, you're not going to worry about anymore. Hey, hey, hi, the old shot. The things that you used to struggle over, you're not going to struggle over that anymore. Hey, hey, hi, 
video shot. I hear the Lord saying the struggle is over. Woo! Glory. Hey, my Lord. He says the struggle is over. That thing that was dead, that was weighing you down, it's over. Receive the word of the Lord. God bless you all. I love you in Jesus' name. Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood signing off on Facebook Live. Join us on our prayer line right now. 712-775-7031. Ask us code 222-953-820. Pal. Amen. Before you leave this broadcast, please share it. Amen. Put it in somebody's inbox. Glory to God. Get your seed in the ground. We have three ways you can sow. We have our ministry cash app, Prophetic Impact 555. Make sure you put the three fives at the end. All right. Prophetic Impact 555 on Cash App. And then we have paypal.me slash prophetic impact. Amen. Paypal.me slash prophetic impact. That's for the PayPal account. And then we have our ministry website, www.propheticimpact1000.com. Get your seed in the ground. Amen. Listen, pray and ask God the seed amount. Glory to God. He's going to give it to you. Amen. He's not giving me a number. Glory to God. The Lord said new beginnings, but he is not giving me a number. Amen. But get your seed in the ground, people of God, and watch God do it for you. Your time is now. Amen. Your time is now to lay aside every weight and the, and the sin that does so easily beset you. Things that are drawing you back. People that are drawing you back. People that are pulling you back. Mm. My Lord, it's time to release them and let them go. Amen. God bless each and every one of you tonight. May the peace of God rest upon your heart and your spirit. And shalom. God bless you.